hello everyone and welcome to uh, this kind of a catch-up session and QA Q&A on New World Marketing. Um, thanks for attending, it's, uh, it's great to have everyone here um, and uh, hopefully you're all doing well and you're all keeping healthy. Um, so I won't uh, go on too long in, in this welcome but I thought I'd just start off by um, by really just start off with a bit of housekeeping as these things these things often start. Um, this the aim of this is to be a truly interactive session. So um, there's a Q and A button that um, that you'll see on your control panel. There's also um, a chat function as well. Um, and throughout the session, there'll be various polls that pop up um, that you'll be able to take part in. So we really hope it's a, an interactive session and it's something that um, that everyone can can be part of. It's not just um, Ed and I talking for at you for an hour but um but yeah so we wanted to do a bit of a recap on on where we are we the background to this is we did this um as a session back in may at the start of uh at the start of this new world as things were changing and and included some of our predictions on how things would go so we'll catch up a little bit about on that and and how we think uh things have transpired and how they've played out um but also, um, like I say, it's really it's really your session as much as it's ours um, to have a, a conversation and, and answer some questions. Um, so you'll hear a little bit from me. I'm Gareth Miller. I'm um, Managing Director at Carswell Gould. And you'll hear from Ed, who's the Creative Director at Carswell Gould. Um, and um, just to give you a little bit of background on the agency. So we're based in Southampton. We've been uh, established for nearly 30 years now. Um, and we've worked across a wide range of, of industries and, and sectors. Um, so we're completely agnostic in terms of um, the types of business we work with. But typically um, we work with everyone from sort of large multinational B2B software companies, logistics companies, sort of um, heavy industry type of companies through to uh, kind of um, leisure and retail um, businesses so um, you know through to like the likes of the watercress line so a real mix of things and our services range from everything um, under the marketing banner so we are truly a full service agency which um, I think uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about it but it stood us in, in really good stead and enabled us to adapt and uh, and and change to um, to this new world we find ourselves in. Um, so yeah, so it's, a, it's an hour session. We've got about 55 minutes left, but we really want to make it interactive and exciting and, and, uh, and something that you go away from it and you, you feel like uh, you've been part of it, but also hopefully with uh, ideas that inspire you to, um, to, to go ahead and, and, uh, and implement some things in your own marketing through your own businesses. So um, without further ado, I'll, um, I'll introduce Ed. So Ed, if you want to switch your camera on, um, so people can see your face. Here he comes. Hopefully, <laughs> um, still a black screen on my screen. Oh, there no, here he is. Great. Okay, um, Ed. So I mentioned a little bit in the intro about um, new world marketing and and what we did probably eight months ago now. Back in I think it was May that we started talking about this. It feels like um, about three years. Do you ago. Wanna... <laughs> it feels like about <laughs> yeah. three years ago, doesn't it? Yeah, I can, I can kick us off for sure, Gareth. Thank you. Um, so I, I guess the, the idea of New World Marketing was really a team of communicators, that, uh, their, their clients and their collaborators. And we, we looked at really what were the key things that we as a team with our clients should be thinking about as we hit this uh, amazing pandemic that's completely changed so many things. And, and, and at the heart of New World Marketing were a were a, a bunch of ideas, a bunch of tactics, um, off, not necessarily all new, but uh, brought together as one to form a, a playbook that businesses could use to help them stay resilient and help them uh, compete and combat what was a very tough time. And we never knew when writing this, uh, I think as looking in Gareth's eyes and I say this, that we would still be here talking about this really? now. This is true. 
Uh, it's quite an incredible thing, but I thought I'd kick off by giving you a bit of a, for those that weren't on the last sessions around New World Marketing, I thought I'd give a little bit of an introduction. So as I said, it was inspired by conversations with clients and colleagues and collaborators, and it, it was all about exploring the question of what are the smartest moves that we can make in tough times, and the result was the guide, and I think we're going to share that guide out again at the end. And you can all have a look at that guide and you can see whether we're Nostradamus or whether we're full of rubbish. And I think it's about about 70, 30. But let's see where we get to on that. Um, a lot of the predictions and a lot of the ideas we've actually found uh, have have been great and have been really useful in our work and the client's work. And we're going to look at some of those things that have been most useful in the session today. And a few of them of the predictions and the assumptions we made haven't come true. And, and we want to look at those as well. And we want to ask you guys out in the audience how you, what your experiences are and whether you can throw some light onto some of these. Um, obviously, this was written at the time of this, this plan or this, this playbook was written at a time where we thought we were at the height of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, eight months on, or as I said, what feels like 10 years on, um, it wasn't the height of the crisis at all. In fact, we were just getting going. So some of those themes um, only, only deepened. And the themes that we were really talking about started with this idea of all of us sat working away in home offices and kitchens and spare rooms. And the idea that pretty soon we'd all come blinking out into the sun. Well, we're still here. I'm still, you can't see my background and for good reason. Um, you know, we're still, a lot of us are working in those situations. But it's not just the fact that we're working in those situations from a delivery point of view as marketeers or as business owners. It's the fact that the zebras are no longer on the grasslands. All of our customer bases and all of the places where we used to market to, that's changed significantly. The, where the audiences are and how they're behaving has changed and uh, will continue to change. And we're going to look at a couple of those points during this session as, as well. Really at the beginning of this pandemic, it was a question mark of, it seemed that people took two options. And I think we'll, we'll start on this area from the anecdotal feedback. I mean, we work with a huge amount of different businesses and a huge amount of different clients. Uh, anything from 4.8 billion pound companies through to really ambitious startups, as, as Gareth was saying, with different pressures, different factors. But across the board, rich, poor, multinational, local, you know, uh, uh, consumer B2B, there was a sort of split. There was some that went dark and they just stopped, you know, completely frozen by the, the what, what, what was and is a really um, huge challenge. Um, and we saw that happening. And the, the other half of our base, and we, we lost significant money during that time. And we're, we're yet to see some of those some of those clients come back online and, and for good reason. Um, but we knew at that point and central to the idea of new world marketing is is the word momentum. Um, and that is momentum is everything in these situations as a business that's gone through a couple of recessions and um, and seen this. And if, if you've done the same, you'll know taking the foot off the gas isn't really an option. And um, for some. There is no choice and we accept that we've got a lot of clients in the in place marketing and in, and in um and in visitor uh, economy and for some they feel there is no choice but even within those markets we feel and new world marketing um suggests that simple actions can be taken to stay front of mind with your customer base whether you're open or not so um we start this with the comment that was part of the original New World Marketing piece, which is momentum is good. It's everything. It's actually inertia that kills businesses. And over the last eight months, we've seen that coming to fruition. And we've seen the smart businesses, uh, first of all, adapt and react and then um, really use it as an opportunity to change their operations, whether that be marketing or the wider operations, and, and double down on engagement uh, in, in many situations. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So before we get into the nuts and bolts, the tactics uh, or the, the thinking and the ideas that we can scrutinize and ask you guys about as well, um, the other part of this is this idea of not going dark. So we, we kicked off a campaign and uh, at the beginning to to try and push this idea. And as I said, some did, 
some didn't. But this idea of not going dark when the odds are against you, and we're a small business, we've been around for a long time, but what we've, however big, small, up or down we've been, it, what this underlined, this, the beginning of this pandemic underlined is the need for people and brands and businesses really to work slicker, smarter and with more flexibility. And, and I think a lot of the ideas you're going to see and we're going to look at again are about that, being flexible, being, trying for businesses to try to adapt to both where their staff are at home, not together, and also where their customers are. Um, and the ideas really are about businesses taking into consideration all the factors that are around them. So, Gareth, if you remember at the beginning, the factors we were looking at were the economic impact on any given sector. So that's the first one. So if we take some of our visitor attractions, absolutely slammed. OK, so that that's a factor there. But if you take some of our B2B flying, <laughs> they're absolutely flying on the software side. The other sort of factors we, we were trying to look at as we audited each of our clients in our own work, the customer behavior, how that was changing. And I think we'll touch on that in a moment as well. The resources available to us as a business or our clients as a business. Um, the constriction and relaxation of physical movement i think we all thought we'd be back in an office again by now didn't we i still, I still, do, yes. I still want to be i still want to be but actually the more we've done this the more we've realized that there's actually great opportunities um and actually productivity and the idea of productivity in our agencies changed slightly and in some ways for the better mm. i think um and the other factors that we were looking at were that where our workforce was um, and really where the customers were. So those were, that's the introduction to new world marketing. That's the context it was created in. But what we thought we could do now is look at some of the, some of the specific tactics that we put together and go through those and, and just chat, Gareth, you and me, about how successful or unsuccessful they were. Um, as, and this all underlined by the idea of this is about coping, adjusting, resetting, and then doing better than you've ever done before in the marketing context, of course. So is that okay for an introduction? I've got no one saying anything to me anywhere. So are you happy with that, Mr. Miller? I'm very happy with that. But um, again, I encourage people to put stuff in chat. You can you can put things as anonymous, I believe, on this system as well. So you know, feel free to berate us or uh, express uh, controversial opinions and uh, with complete anonymity. Um, so don't, go for don't it. Don't say that again. Don't yeah. say that ever again. <laughs> so um, Melanie Osborne says that sounds good to me. So we love it. Uh, Melanie, thank you. thank you very much. So right. let, let's dig into it. So, so an obvious one to start off with, really, considering the, uh, the world uh, as we are. And uh, I think this is you can't really call us Nostradamus because of this, because it was uh, staring us in the face. But I think the last few months has kind of proven that that this is a, is a very sensible and practical play for, for a lot of businesses. Yeah, and I, th I think the other side of this is understanding or considering what we all need mean by digital. And I think I think the first instance in, as a marketing agency, you might think we're talking about web sites websites 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 um and yes that's a big part of it but at the big where we saw the big in the in the largest businesses we work with and we work with some absolute stonkers of size of businesses in those the biggest challenge they're facing is this digital transformation piece so this idea of of changing their headspace to think about how they don't just do digital but they are digital natives and for people of a certain age, which we are cusp, Mr. Miller, but the, the you know, Hannah, you can only see, she's hiding, but you can see a little head up there. She, she's probably the first of the true digital uh, natives in, in terms of always working in that way. So for these people that are running these huge businesses, it is an effort to shift to digital. And that transformation piece doesn't necessarily come naturally. And when you've got hugely long lasting businesses with systems and processes that have been in place for a long time, it can be terrifying to consider the things like CRM sits within this space, how we scrutinize the data, how we actually, uh, everyone spent the last sort of five, 10 years 
talking about big data and now everyone's going okay we've got a lot of data how the hell are we going to use this data and i think we we found that um and naming no names for obvious reasons but um a lot of our biggest clients um they're on board or have been for probably over a decade with shifting things to digital but it's um it, there hasn't been that impetus to, to do it. So they've got CRM systems in place, but they're not using them. So they're still using spreadsheets for CRMs, even though they've got a big, uh, you know, Dynamics or HubSpot or, or you know, or Salesforce platforms sat in the background. But well, it's one of the most frustrating data. things in the world to us, where money's being spent on something that isn't being used, isn't being, you know, if, if I've got £100, and half of that is being spent on stuff that doesn't do anything for me to actually get out there at a time when it's hard to engage with people. That's a pretty stupid move. I mean, that's why I don't get to do the conversations up front about digital transformation. <laughs> well, Gareth, it's an interesting one for us that. as well is that we, we've, I mean, and I still think it's the case, but um, marketing is about, um, about predictions and, and, and it's about repetition in a, in a number of ways. And, and actually, We've always been quite sniffy about agencies that say, oh, we're a digital agency because we're a full service agency. And, and we, I still wholeheartedly believe that's the right place to be. Um, obviously, we've dialed up our digital um, focus, but we've still found that, you know, that using physical objects, sending physical objects, direct mail and things like that is still hugely powerful, even in today's day and age. But what we've done is, you know, particularly with um with existing clients and and so the the nurturing stuff is to you know to to ask them can we send you something to your home address where you're working are you okay with us doing that and and communicate in that way still so although yes shifting digital uh, efforts to digital is is 100 the right thing to do at the moment and actually you know we've all been forced to use tools like we're using today like zoom and things that were just kind of sat in the background to a certain extent but um but i do think that that argument for for, for physical entities to be part of the marketing mix and um, and not 100% digital is, is still there, it still remains. So maybe that's the, because I'm, I'm thinking back to the original prediction around this, and that was the significant budget will move towards inbound and automation at a greater pace in the mid-market and, and smaller clients. And, and we've definitely seen that. And our own team, inbound team are obviously working, e even, um, I'm trying to do this in a way of not mentioning names, as you said, but even government organisations on a local level or, or authorities are actually local authorities are, are, are realising that adopting decent CRM, decent automation platforms, tying the, the, the customer or citizen journey all the way through that can actually be a huge benefit. But what and, and that came true and, and we're finding ourselves very busy with that type of work. But what you seem to be hinting at is maybe we, you know, maybe the, the chase towards that leaves marketeers who are sat here now given the opportunity to use print in an intelligent way to trigger those digital campaigns or to, you know, enhance those campaigns. Yeah, and, and, and personalization has never been more key. So um, the level of if you can get the data, which is obviously a digital play, but using things to um, become more personalized and have one-to-one -one conversations through digital and and uh, and other means is is more important than ever because we're all or well, a large amount of us are all sat at home in kitchens and bedrooms and other places um and it's it it's a more it's more of a one-to-one -one conversation than it's ever been in in the past so um using data in an intelligent way um to power that is 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 really key and I, I think this sort of the other thing and we'll move on from digital now because I think it's sort of like a bit of a broad catch mm. thing and, and we put it in there because at the time um, uh, of this going live it's also about what work can we do well when we're all spread remotely I mean I've not seen you in it in well in almost a, in almost a year <laughs> I've seen you like once or something <laughs> and we work together every single day and we work, we speak every single day and we deliver work as we did. And that's in no short part due to digital and technology, obviously, and everyone on the call probably feels the same. Um, and so th th that was sort of a big part of this is if you can't do what you used to be doing and if your teams are separated and if did you know, really getting to grips with that CRM piece in digital 
really is fundamental to new world marketing because at the heart of it is understanding where your customer is and understanding what they're doing and being able to react to that in a good way. And what we found at the beginning of this, this pandemic, and we find at the beginning of any significant impact, you know, economic or, or societal change is that things shift and you need to pivot and you need to adjust. And actually our clients that were more plugged in and had those CRMs, they were more resilient at that time. Whereas the, the clients and customers and including ourselves, we had to do some rethinking about how we were managing our relationships with our customers and with our prospects because we weren't able to go to 100 um, events a year to go and show our face. So this digital thread flows all the way through it. So let's, let's move on from here and have a look at another one. And that's exactly where it flows to, really, doesn't it? So do you want to talk a bit about what your predictions were about inbound specifically at the beginning? Yeah, I, and it, it does flow from that. So it, it, it is having having those better relationships, improving the content that you've got, focusing on SEO. So you're whatever you're doing, you're, you're more findable. Um, if that's even a word to your audience. You're putting out stuff that is relevant to, to what they're interested in. Um, if, if you're shifting your focus to digital, you're able to focus more on inbound and making sure that the content is right for that audience. Um, and then actually it comes back to that CRM uh, discussion as well, is that once you've gained that interest, I mean, it, it's it's all the way back to, to ADA and Marketing 101, isn't it? Once you've gained well, that interest. Let's pause there. You, you talk, maybe I don't know what ADA is. What are you talking about? Awareness, interest, desire and action. So the marketing funnel. So taking people through that, um, decision process um, and actually you know now that a ADA was invented I think in the 1920s so you think about the technology they were using then. Um, I, I that, think that you're hitting on a really interesting uh, it'd be interesting to see if anyone's got a view on this out there in digital world maybe Melanie who's the only person I know is actually there at the moment <laughs> but what we what we found because we we've been a HubSpot partner for some years but what we found during the last couple of years, we've expanded out from their dynamics. We're using a number of different platforms and the old marketing BS comes back in, doesn't it? So Ada has been around since the what 1920s. I mean, I've never seen it described so many different ways in all my life. And it's a bit of a minefield for businesses and, and, and marketeers. And I think marketeers see through it, I think a lot, but just the sheer volume of ways of people trying to own what is basic marketing sense, trying to make it sound new and different. I mean, have you got a view on that? I mean, that's been an interesting well, thing yeah, to come out and, of this year. I mean, certainly, is, I mean, we, we love HubSpot. We're a HubSpot partner, but HubSpot um, themselves are always trying to reinvent the way that they, they talk about this. So they've gone from a marketing funnel to the marketing flywheel which is essentially the same thing, but it loops back on itself. And it's kind of... Too many it, marketeers involved in this, isn't it? That's, that's <laughs> it yes. But the, I mean, the thing, the thing about all of this, and I guess going back to shifting efforts to digital, it's the principles of marketing have always been the same. You're dealing with human beings. You, you, you might be doing it through more sophisticated tools, but actually human beings are emotional creatures. And they, it, it's the, the old adage about it's, it's easier to feel than think. So if you can connect with people on an emotional level, then um, you're more likely to convert them as to be a customer, a sinister. And, as and, that I, and I think that's the heart of this sort of, you know, uh, as an agency, we've always, that's been the, the, the core of what we've done because specialising is not what we specialise in and what are we try and get all our clients to specialise in is marketing communications, you know, and understanding where those customers are and understanding what they feel and how to make that. Let, let's keep going though, because I'm aware of ticking, oh, I come back to Ada all the time. So Melanie's just popped up. Thanks, Melanie. Uh, I've come back to Ada all the time. It's the absolute basic and a really good starting point. Um, BS. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no other industry can create more BS than ours, can it? So uh, what we've tried to do with this uh, document and these ideas is cut through that, that, that BS a bit and try and pull it back down to something a little bit more um, uh, marketing basics so in the actual in the actual guide it's all about the p's and no one talks about the p's anymore but you know it goes back to proposition place people and it starts thinking about okay so when times are tough let's really take it back to the the nuts and bolts of this 
Where are my customer? How are they feeling? What can I do to help them? At a time like this, are there things I can do to make their life easier in terms of how I'm ordering? And you see this, you see the companies that have that have been intelligent about that, making it easier to deliver food to your door. Now you don't leave anymore. You know, the, the, the amount of delivery services that have gone through the roof is there's a good reason for that. Um, so anyway, let's keep going. Measure R. Okay. I think we've got a poll here, haven't we, to uh, to to put up on on this point as well. So it might just be you, me, and Melanie voting. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, let's see yeah. if we can get a bit more engagement through clicking a button. So to give some context, as you will click these buttons, uh, and you should see a little poll window come up. At the beginning of this, we predicted that there would be a huge increase in measurement, um, analytics, uh, and um, the study of um, what is actually happening and we want to know in your worlds uh, if what you think so since January 2020 has your businesses focus or your clients focuses if you're an agency person like us on analytics and marketing management has it increased stayed about the same or reduced twice apparently very good um, <laughs> let's just all use the top reduced to make that easier. <laughs> yeah, let's ignore the, yeah. The excellent one. poll there guys um, so sorry Anna <laughs> And, and while you guys vote, I mean, the original sort of prediction around this, Gareth, was that we felt this was really a huge route to understanding and that we really wanted to put understanding that customer base at the centre of it. And with all the people working remotely and with a bigger investment in digital, we felt it was a great opportunity for businesses and marketeers to get to talk about, get their heads around audit past performance site traffic review their campaigns and that we would use that information to inform and um in, improve what was going out so we said that you know things like seo measurement software like google analytics mars crms your own you know your own um your own business information but uh, as the poll seems to have finished now um let's have a look yeah <laughs> there you go so 40% increased, um, there's only a few of us voting, 60%. Uh, so what would you say about that, Gareth? Does that feel as we were discussing yeah, this so I think, day? I think this is one of the areas that we thought, you know, going back to more things being digital, actually, we thought reduced budgets, everything turning digital, people would be jumping up and down for the numbers and making sure that, um, especially from our client's point of view, that they, they had detail about about everything and I think I think that I would say it's probably about right because a lot of our clients have said we want to see the numbers but actually it's about the right numbers it's about showing showing numbers that matter not um you know blinding them with a huge amount of data that they they can't see the wood for the trees and actually um what we're finding is that um it's the results that matter it's not the how many visitors you've had, how much engagement with your social post. It's um, or or even conversions. It's about because not meaning to go back back in time again to the I you know I I I know that fifty percent of my marketing budget is working, but I don't know which 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 fifty percent it is. But actually, we know that um, if we're running a campaign, it's going to have an effect on the brand as well as the generating leads. If it's um, if it's a b2b or sales if it's b2c um so actually it's not ramped up as much as i was anticipating this time last may um so so it's probably i would say it's probably about the same as it always has been people want to see evidence that the marketing is uh, happening i mean I, I wonder if one of the the you know what what we did notice is that it has been tough over the last you know over the last few months and i i wonder again in our audience if anyone's feeling the same about this but actually getting stuff done has taken a bit more energy as people pivot and and i think in some of my clients that i'm working with it's just one step too far to really get into it and these are even organizations with with people that are paid to do just this but the volume of data now the volume of information is so high within those sorts of organizations 
that um sorry for my zoom going off continually uh <laughs> this is the life we live now um but the volume of the information is so high that scrutinizing it in a good way has almost become uh become um a distraction from getting shit done excuse my language getting stuff done so it i wonder whether this will start coming back to the fore we certainly still measure everything every single month there's still reports but we find ourselves not really getting much playing back against that those thoughts that get put forward it's, and it's we've had a conversation haven't we about you know if the client's not going to work from this data we need to proactively do this so if if i'm the marketing director and the boss isn't going oh yeah that's really good data you found um it's probably because they're trying to sort out another hundred fires going on in the rest of their business and maybe it's up to us as marketeers to take ownership and the initiative and do something with that information. So nurture every connection was our next prediction. And this was kind of, I guess, again, in, in, as a moment in time, and it, it's, it rings true now as it, as it did then, but actually, you know, when, when COVID hit and, and, you know, certainly for us, when, when it first, when it first kicked off, we were getting phone calls from clients saying, I've, got, I've, I've been told I've got to freeze marketing budgets, so I've got to stop doing this, we've got to, we've got to pause the retainer. Um, and actually, you know, that was a knee jerk reaction to, to things. Um, and in some cases, like Ed was mentioning in the, in the leisure sector, it's, it's, you know, it's no better now than it, it was then. But, um, but actually, you've got to, you know, this may be a, a, as much a a bit of advice to ourselves and to every other agency is that actually if you've got if you've got clients you've been working with for years they trust you you've got really good relationships double down on those relationships and make sure that um that you're able to provide value in in times when um when the the budget's not going to be available as, as it was in the past you know we made some decisions at the beginning of this which we which uh, uh were first made in the big like the 90s recession and it was well we've got no one else to work for so let's keep working for them and we and we did that and I think that's not to you know it was a, it was a no-brainer because as soon as you stop as soon as you allow something to stop it's really hard to get it going again and with the majority of the people that we did that it it paid back yeah. uh, with some it didn't and um you know hey ho uh but I think on the whole, that was good. But this this idea of nurturing is both in terms of a sales and a customer point of view. But it's also flows into data again, CRM. It flows into how we campaign, how we personalize stuff, how we understand that our customers or our targets might be um, struggling and we adapt our service or provision to suit their needs. So we're seeing evidence of this in pretty much every, every area. Um, we there are still businesses that doggedly say this is how you buy from me and that's it but you know if you throw your mind back to the 90s and that you know the, the dot-com boom there i mean the, the things happen and you either change and you adapt or you're part of the old world and i think that i think bluntly that <laughs> we're in a, we're in a similar if not even more um uh what's the right word um, solidified version of that it's an even more you know we're talking about most of the world changing their behavior at one time and that that is exciting unheard of challenging terrifying all of those things but it it should be it should underline these headlines at every point you know and i think that that's great. something that we i mean we we certainly with our clients we we see we see ourselves as part of their furniture, critical friend, you know, shoulder to cry and all of those things. And, and certainly marketing directors and, and heads of marketing, it can be a it can be a lonely place at times. And actually, if you've got a, um, a an ally, an agency that you can trust and, and that you you feel is is supporting you, which we hope hope that all our clients feel that way about us, then, you know, now is the time that people come to us and say, OK, I don't know what to do. How do I communicate with my customers? How do I, how do I adapt to this new world? Well, actually, you know, you've got, um, they've got a, t a team of people that are thinking on their behalf and, and are allies in, in what they're yeah. trying to achieve. And I think equally it works well in house. If you can get that right, you know, where everyone's moved off and you've got disparate teams, I think 
you know, we're coming out as a business with a campaign soon, which some of you might receive if you're lucky enough. Oh, it's that good. Um, but the central to that is, is, is exactly this, nurturing and understanding. Um, but the idea of internal teams giving that same sort of vibe as an agency is not impossible. If you can, if you can get somebody that, if you're working in a business and you can get someone from another part of the business to be that critical friend, um, you know, now more than ever, it really pays to help each other out and to and to talk to each other more. And I think that we shouldn't underestimate the, the connection between those sorts of human things and bottom line return for a business. I mean, I, I can literally square those away. Um, and it's that feel piece again. But it's about productivity. It's about understanding where we're going. It's about your customers understanding what's going on. And all of that play, pays back in the end to the bottom line of the business. Um, anyway, let's keep going. So this was invented really, um, it, it, it's been around a while in our, in our business, but we do a lot of campaigning for, for clients. And often campaigns have lots of different components to them. So I don't know what you will do on the call, but you might be a designer, you might be a marketing person. You go, I'd like a marketing campaign. Come on, guys, and you're using your internal team. And someone's making an email and someone's making some adverts. Someone does a press release. And hopefully you are the glue that glues them all together in the middle. What campaign in a box does is as we moved in, in a much more overt way, once we moved to remote working, as all of our client teams dispersed all over the place, all the way around the world, in kitchens and bathrooms or wherever they wanted to be. I don't know why they'd be in bathrooms. <laughs> Good Wi-Fi reception there. Kitchens though. and bedrooms. Um, but what Campaign in a Box did is very simply is put all the thinking about the campaign on one page. Uh, it, it, it brought all of those components together and it devised a, a way to very quickly iterate creative digital camp usually digital but sometimes integrated campaigns which include advertising video work you know tv outdoor um online it, whatever that campaign includes the the campaign in a box brings it all together in one place and why that was important was it so hard to get stakeholder sign off and so hard to get everyone singing off the same page? And what this really helped us do, and we'll keep running these forever, I think, in the format they're in. Um, what, and if people are interested, they can let us know and I can send you examples of these, but we're not gonna go into too much detail now. But what they allowed us to do is work as a linchpin for our clients' businesses and their internal teams so that their design teams, their web teams, their finance teams, all of their teams understood what we were doing with that campaign, when things would happen. And that meant that they could all play a part in the success of that campaign, even though some were remote, some were, some were furloughed at that point, but now they're back in. And so it's been a really useful way. So digital campaigning has probably been the thing that saved us um, full stop yeah you know, and I, I would agree I it's it's um it's a way of productizing what what we do obviously the creative and the you know the the, the process that we go through is uh, unique to that campaign but actually if you think about the elements um that we have as marketers to at our disposal our toolkit is 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 limited to to what's available, isn't it? And it's it's you know, and Ed mentioned you know if you're talking about email, social, advertising, you, the, all that stuff is part of this campaign in a box. We choose from our toolkit the most appropriate thing for that campaign. The creative and the messaging is all tailored around the audience and what the uh, customer is trying to sell or trying to talk about. It so it's a, a way of formulating and productizing what we do as an agency, and and it's been uh, it, for us. And that's the, you know, it's not understated what it says. It is, is probably the thing that saved us and enabled us to actually evolve and improve what we do as an agency in this environment and something that we will take forward forever in terms of how we, we deliver what we do. Um, so now, it's something... Talking of evolving, um, I'm aware that time is ticking past. And as usual with us, 
there's too much to get through. So I think if we do a rapid fire on these and I shout out what they mean, do the right thing. Come on, guys, you work it out. Um, uh, doing things that play back, helping out people is a big part of the core of new world marketing. If you want to find out more, <laughs> let's keep going. And this was another one of these things which was key. Would people repackage uh, yesterday's content? So that was looking back across your most popular blog articles, your most popular content and reworking them. Now we've got some articles that are really useful if you're interested in this. This is a really good SEO play at any time, but at a time when we were all working remotely, we predicted people would do more of this. Um, it, I'm, it, I'm not sure if they have or haven't, to be honest. Well, this, it, we have. But. We talked about this a little bit yesterday and, and it's interesting because at this point we thought everyone marketing budgets frozen people aren't going to be wanting spending to produce new content um and we kind of got this wrong because actually what we found is that um people are just producing different content and we've probably done more video work and um and that kind of work new content than than ever before so although this rings true that you know as it's a, a good plan, it, yeah. it's best practice to do this yeah. but actually we didn't see that that stop um in terms of new content that we were predicting. And, and again here, we put a lot of effort into this at the beginning, but actually what we found was, so forming new partnerships and collaborations. Okay, so if you're in tough times, it pays to work together. And we've done that before, and it's a great way of working. So these could be pro, you know, pro bono work or, or non, non commercial partnerships without you spending huge amounts of money to make those happen. Now, the reality here was at the beginning, a lot of the people which we'd usually talk to just disappeared. They went completely dark. Um, and so they are starting to come out of that now, of course. Um, but this is another one that didn't really go crazy, but I still think there's a lot of value. Yeah, and partnerships are hard. It's a net, you know, if you, you've all got to find consensus and, and work together on things. And I think that people are naturally at the moment um, you know, a lot of people have been on furlough. So when, you know, when Ed said that they're not there, they, they weren't, they haven't been there. Some are yeah. back now, but, um, but also there is that kind of focus on the, the, the day job and, and partnerships have, have a little bit gone by the wayside. So um, although it's, it, you know, in theory, it's the right thing to do in practical terms at the moment, it's, it's hard. Um, there's another quick poll here as well. So if you're, if you're still awake and with us, then, uh, then, please take part in this poll but um so it's, <laughs> it's nice nice so this is really and we don't know how big the businesses are you're working in um and for those that you know we haven't got a lot of respondents on this so let, let's just have a quick look um no. okay so really the aim there in terms of the poll is at, at the beginning of the first one we did this and people felt pretty separate pretty pretty separated so It'll be interesting to see where we get to at the moment with this. And then we'll zoom forward, I think, Gareth, to play it because we've got 15 minutes left. Maybe we zoom forward to the next uh, poll uh, after that and then the Q&A. Um, this one's just worth just just mentioning very quickly. And it's it's again. Up, well, great. <laughs> That's a good result to the, the poll. So last time, as I said, we were probably, it was probably about 70% feeling completely discombobulated. And I think what that underlines is we're used to it. So get on with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. Okay. And this is just worth mentioning because it's, it, uh, it's close to our hearts and what we're, we're doing at the moment. Um, obviously, there's the conferences and the, the events and the face-to-face the -face stuff where um, a lot of uh, marketers spent a lot of time and effort and money. Um, it's all stopped. So we've got to think differently. And actually, um, that's something that um, probably at the time that this was written, it was we, we, we saw the road ahead, but it was a prediction about how that would work. Um, and only just recently, we've really seen um, that some of those larger events that are... Um, that were just cancelled at the start of it, people thought, okay, we still need to do this. We still need to engage with this audience. How do we do that virtually? And, and, and Ed, you've just delivered um, for a client of ours 
a, a big global event where it had what, 2,000 delegates on yeah, that? Well, 8,000 8, 8, uh, 8, invitees across um, pretty much every country in the world. And I think, I think in that context, it allowed that business to move from, it was a kickoff for the year. So every year they do a kickoff and usually that's a sales kickoff. Uh, which is just the sales force because they drive the income for the business. But by pivoting to a, at first a hybrid event, and then eventually it had to become a purely online event, it allowed them to open that up to everyone from the T-boy to the top. And I think this is something that's really great and enabling about this sort of technology, that, it, that for some of our businesses, especially the larger ones, it lets them be a bit more human and a bit more open. At the other end of the scale, obviously, we... We do things like Venture Fest South, which is a huge event for us on a, on a local level is something we're very passionate about. It's been incredibly hard to keep that going and keep that pushing. Uh, we, we've got in March the 8th, the great virtual event partnering Innovate UK and the KTN. But another challenge with events is again, it's that partnership working. Are the people there? Are they still committed? Have they got their own, their own big problems to sort out? And is it a distraction? So, the 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 thirty three percent to sixty seven percent result we've got is interesting because what I'm hearing on the on in terms of what people want to pay for is probably more the hybrid style of events will keep going because the value back is a lot higher. So if you've not tried to think about how, say you're a solicitor's firm and you do like two hundred events a year, you know that those small sort of events how could you enhance that with hybrid events? And I think that that's not gonna go away. It's not gonna flip back and go, great, we can all go out now because quite frankly, people are expressing less interest in driving two and a half hours to spend a day and a half, you know, and actually when you can get what you need from a quick call yeah, yeah. like this. I mean, the, the, the flip side of that is um, a, a live event that happened in, in the leisure industry was, um, the Watercrest Line, which is one of our clients, um, had the, the Steam Illuminations event. And we um, we we did a press launch for it. We did all the, the PR around it. And there was such an appetite because there was such a kind of a black hole of good news and these things happening. But it just, it was massive. So international news, um, all the national um, outlets were there. And and so it was, it was huge. So if there is an opportunity to do something live, then, there's there's such interest in it that um obviously we were you know we were amazing and we drummed up all that interest so it's hard work on our behalf but um but it's an opportunity as well we better fly to the q a otherwise we'll have nothing in terms of the we'll have no time to do the q q and a's um so so we're starting we've we had questions come in before the event and we've we start to get questions coming in during um during the session as well um if i kick off with rachel's asked um where are you seeing most of the marketing money being spent? So that's that's a, a wide ranging question, isn't it? Well, well, it it it's it, it's it varies hugely depending on the type of client and what they're doing. As I sort of touched on before, a lot of the a, a lot of the marketing budget is being used to shift to some of these digital channels in our world. So whether that be events, whether it be automation, whether it be uh, web, web enhancement and digital campaigning. So, um, I mean, people, marketeers are wanting to put their money into things that they feel are dependable. Um, and I think that that's always been the case. And in a place where you can't really get out that much in the UK, especially a um, bit different around the rest of the world, but, pretty much can't get out then all the money is is going towards finding them digitally um that would be my answer to that um another one's coming just a, a bit of a curveball question i guess on this one have you got any jobs going <laughs> so um well we've got uh, no <laughs> well that, that's not strictly true because we've we we we're taking part in the government kickstart scheme so we are looking for um a, a, a junior designer actually at the moment through that kickstart scheme um so i'm not sure if that's even live yet but that would be through job center plus i believe that people can can find that so if there's any uh any people that qualify for that and are interested in a in a junior designer role then um then please kind of look out for it mm -hmm. um and uh, or you know ping us your details and and we'll we'll uh, we'll send you 
information where we know how you can actually apply for that role. But um, but that's that's happening now. So um, so that's one. And, and I'd also add to that, although we don't have job specs out at the moment, um, we're always open. And probably what, one of the things that's come out of this is opening up how we all work with each other and collaborate. Um, so a lot of the projects that we're running, I'm, I'm sort of tying in with other agencies, other creatives, other delivery. And that's been something that maybe maybe five years ago we wouldn't have done. We would have been a bit like this. So the question of do we have any jobs going, actually the, the question probably goes back to the audience. What can you do for us? Uh, let us know, send it on a postcard and we'll, uh, we're always open to it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just a slightly related point is during this time we we have um, we have brought two new members of the the Castle Gould team on board, um, and um, one of the only only one of the guys has ever met them in real life just to hand over the the Mac. So Charlotte, who's our, our new designer, um, yeah, she popped into the office, collected a Mac, and and that's the kind of the most sort of non virtual interaction she's had really with us, but. Um, but we talk obviously every day and, and it seems to seems to work well, the, the work's really good. So um, so no problems there. Um, another question that's come in is, well, since watching you last time, what's the, what would you say is the biggest change that you've seen? I think, I guess we've kind of answered that in terms of our long spiel about uh, newer marketing and how that's worked and the shift to digital um, the behaviour shift across, you know, there hasn't been another time in printing press, but even that was was sort of, it, it emanated from one space and came out like that. Industrial Revolution did the same. I mean, when you look at the percentage of people who economically can afford a computer and consider that as a measure, a very broad measure, to um, the types of people that that are now sat at home working at home in those economies. I can't think of another time or an example when such a huge swathe of people have had a behavioural change other than the world wars were in one go. Um, and, and that's really something that the truth will out on that over the next few years um, in, in terms of that. But I think as businesses, we can already see that, we can already feel that. And as humans, we're already experiencing that. So uh, marketing often isn't that hard just put yourself in the in the shoes of the people you're trying to sell to and if they're anything like you think about what your life's like at the moment and rework all of your marketing around that the, there's another question on here about how has how has your business been affected recently um and i think we've kind of answered that as well in 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 what we've been talking about i mean that it was a real like you know march the 18th when we all picked up our uh on apple max and uh, started working from home um it was it was at so proper squeaky bum time and and like i say there was a a, a lot of phone calls from from clients saying that they had been told from from up above that you know either stop working or freeze the budget or reduce the budget so it was scary it was really scary at that point and we've had to evolve and adapt and i think um and work with with our clients the clients that have remained i hate to use the word loyal but it's it's part of part of it is um to to evolve what they're doing and how that works and adapt to maybe reduce budgets or adapt to how they're they're spending their money and actually refocus on things that that really matter um so at and the, moment, long, the other thing is it's a long game gareth yeah. it, you know we've been around almost 30 years it, it, we're, we're lucky in that sense that we've sort of got that. Um, I mean, we're not out of it yet. We don't, you know, who, who knows what's going to happen over the next the next uh, few years. But certainly, the steps that got taken, some of which are part of new world marketing, some some of which were inspired by the creation of this this yeah. guidebook, are the things that have kept us alive, really, and, and going. I think that's it. As we talk about it, well, obviously this is a kind of a free ranging bit of a ramble chat, isn't it? But the yeah. stuff in new world marketing is, you know, we we've we believe in that. That's what we've adapted ourselves, adopted ourselves. And that's what we're we're using. And, it, you know, I've, I've got a, a, a picture that's not hung on the wall that's down here that's got a wooden frame. And I, whenever I talk, it's OK at the moment. I sort of touch the picture frame because I think everyone does. Yeah, because yeah. you don't know what's around the corner. But at the moment, the moves that we have made have 
have proven themselves to to be um, be effective. The other thing that I think is worth sharing with people that are on the call, if there is, is whatever you do, whether you're a marketer or whether it's a business. I think the thing the, the thing that the nugget of value that came out of it is not necessarily new world marketing. It's not necessarily this or that. Or that. But it's, it's the fact that we got our team to be more agile and more flexible with us very quickly. And it wasn't easy and it's still hard. And people, you know, for some, it's really hard working like this. But the quicker that your business can flex in all areas, you know, we did a lot of work to cut costs that we'd never done before. And that's probably probably the biggest thing we did as a business, if we want to know that that sort of side of, of things is that we cut our costs right down not human costs but we went back through our stuff and we had we were paying thousands and thousands for digital services and, and bits of kit that over the years we'd added and we cut all of that that was probably one of the best exercises we'd been forced to do in 10 years um anyway yeah so there's another question i think that's come in Mr. yeah Moore. and this is this is one that's um it's, it's close to my heart at the moment as much as customer data can be but um so steven's asked it seems that many large companies have firewalled their contact details so it's very difficult to get contact names phone numbers email addresses what's an alternative way to reach potential customers um so it it yeah it, it is hard it, the 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 Are way we talking b2b here do you think maybe Stephen uh, could well i'm assuming so because he's talking about larger <laughs> companies so um but it is, yeah, it, is, it has, has become increasingly difficult. And obviously with things like GDPR that have, um, have focused on data and, and the, the penalties of getting it wrong, um, it's, it is a, a bit of a, it's not a dark art, but it, you need the expertise to be able to do it. Or you need, um, you need the, the know-how and the software to be able to find that data. So um, it's something that we've, we've spent a lot of time and we've been investing in. I mean, it's the opposite of what Ed was saying about uh, not investing in uh, in software. Oh yeah, we cut the bad costs. <laughs> yeah. But but Stephen's point is, this is something we've been wrangling with for the last what four four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've now in. We're not going to go into the details of the investments that we've made, please, Gareth. <laughs> but, but, but the kit that we've now got and the systems that we've got allow us to do things that we couldn't do before in terms of targeting, uh, targeting individuals, especially from a B2B point of view. And when you mix in the, the vested interest and you know the, the ability that we're allowed to market to those people if we can get their details. And the kit that we use, I think it uses a mix of data sources from the internet and from social media, is that correct? Yeah, 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 so it's... Um, and it's really rich data. So things like email addresses and even uh, mobile phone numbers where they've, they've given permission as well. So it's- But it's not getting data in the old way. I think from me, so I, this is Gareth's baby really, but I, I've got clients that are saying, right, I, I'll give you an example. I work with a charity that represents um, uh, all the solicitors in the UK and Wales and Ireland, UK and Wales. Um, so oh, they yes, need yes. to engage with them it on mass now if Stephen if you're talking about data permission then there's a there's an audience that you need to get it right in you really do and what the tools we've now got allow us to do so I went to a traditional data uh, um, data company and really the quality and the volume of the data and the cost of that data was very high so we had to look at different solutions because we're looking at large volumes and and now this mix of um, uh, what is permission-based um, data taken from LinkedIn and uh, and email signatures from this this, this tool that, uh, is providing us with a, a much higher level of data, but that's only half the the problem. Um, yeah, you fired walled contact details, so now we've got the contact details. How do you actually migrate those permissions over to you? So the job now is with these things is rather than buying a data and then sending a campaign and going, oh, what did I get back? The job now is to say, okay, I can get hold of some of this data, but what am I going to do really to convert them over to my list? And that's the job that we have to do as marketeers and and, and how we have to work the campaigns we're working on. So we, we found that we're not really struggling to reach those, especially in the B2B capacity, we're able to access all of that, uh, but it's cost us a lot of money to be able to do that. 
But the big challenge is then how you create that conversation and move it from a, a data permission relationship from one service to your client's brand or your, or your business's brand. And the ways we're doing that, as Gareth touched on those, is a mixture of digital campaigning and, and print, which has always been the way, but highly personalised. Um, I think that, that this, this has enabled us to supercharge those campaign in a box type activities that we do. So just meaning that our targeting is, um, and for our clients and for, for ourselves, we're able to be even more targeted and get to the people that we really want to get to with those campaigns. And, and think, Stephen, if you've got any follow up questions, just say we'll come back to you uh, individually on that if you're if you're wondering anything else. So we're at 11 o'clock. Do you want to try and get one more in before we? Um, so last well, would be a good last question. Um, how about just reading down the list of questions that we've got. So sorry if I've missed uh, answering any questions that have been have been sent through. Um, how about that? I mean, it's a, it's a it's a bit of a. Um, what do you think are the industries that will thrive most coming out of the COVID pandemic? How about that one? <laughs> Big question to end on. on. I mean, anyone online. It's, if you ask that question, I'm assume everyone's going to put Amazon on the answer. <laughs> well, I mean, I coming, mean out, coming out of it, when things open up, I mean, everyone I think is desperate to go for a pint, aren't they? Or go for a uh, dinner, or you know, just get out. Um, and yeah. start kind of being human again and, and I, I don't want to end on a low but my, <laughs> my feeling is that some of these changes are, are fairly permanent um and while as we as we originally said in our document to go full you know the plan of new world marketing we said one day not too long ago we'll come blinking out of our rooms into the sun and see what's going on and I was hoping it was summer last year but no maybe we're now hoping it's summer this year great I think you're right I think the, uh, on a local and a, and, and a regional level that I can't wait for the opening up of those of those really important community uh, businesses everything from shopping centers through to parks through to visitor attractions through to museums these are a big part of Carswell Gould's heritage for 30 years, a big part of our world was arts and cultural marketing, place marketing. Um, and I really want to, I'm, I'm really interested to see some of the organizations we help set up, what they're gonna do coming out of this and how they're gonna double down and help get people back so that we can, but I'm desperate for a pint, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and that's, I think, where should, we should end it. I'll, I'll go for a pint, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, um, thank you for me, but Gareth, I'll let you, Close yeah, I'm, thank you to everyone for, for attending and thanks for your questions. I hope you enjoyed it. I, think you, I hope you found it um, of interest and, and maybe there's a couple of little things that might spark some ideas. Um, obviously, um, we'll, you know, our contact details, we'll share them. Find us on LinkedIn, uh, come to our, our website or drop us a, an email. Um, our emails are, are simple. It's either Gareth or Ed at castlegold.co.uk. Um, we'd love to hear from you and um, and hear your thoughts on on what we've discussed today. So um, stay stay healthy, um, stay prosperous, and uh, and uh, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>